hello I'm back again and um, today I want to talk all about how to care for your luxury vintage candles so I am a self-confessed candle junkie I do not mind spending 40 50 60 sometimes into the hundreds of pounds on candles I'm not even kidding I have one that costs 350 pounds I know that's obscene I know that's more than some people's rent please don't troll me but I am just being honest it was just before Christmas I just took the plunge <laughs> Love it, I love it so much. So today I want to talk all about how to care for your luxury scented candles. Quite frankly, when you're spending like 30, 40, 50 pounds, even if you're spending 10 pounds, you want it to last and there's nothing worse than when you're burning a candle and then you realize you're at the end of the candle and there's a whole heap of wax still in there and you think that is hours of burn time wasted. So I'm gonna chat all about how to make them last as long as possible. So here's a candle, it's very nice, it's by Flamingo Candles. It smells so good. It's actually rose and oud and I love it. It says mega bee. On the front, it's really fun. So this is an example of a candle. I also have another candle here. Whoop, that nearly broke. Um, with this one's a Bella Freud one. I'm really excited about using this one. Always put your candle on an even surface. I learned this the hard way for years and years and years. I had these wonky shelves in my old flat. They were put up really badly and they were on a slight slope. So whenever the candle burnt, it burnt like that, which meant one side of the jar got really hot and the other side of the jar didn't get hot enough. So one side of the candle would always have a huge amount of wax left over. Over, really frustrating really annoying and then I realized it's because my shelves were wonky so don't <laughs> don't put your candles on a wonky surface because that won't help them burn down correctly second of all the first time you ever burn them and actually it's generally good practice to keep them burning for a good amount of time you always want I don't know if you can see I don't want to like spill wax over myself but basically you always want to be able to look down and see a whole layer the whole top layer of melted wax if it's kind of like made like a little bit of a crater of wax that's okay but like ideally you want the whole top layer to have completely melted completely liquid wax so try not to blow out your candle or snuff out your candle until the whole of the top layer has completely melted down that is like paramount okay next i always suggest instead of blowing out your candle i always suggest snuffing out i just think you, you get a cleaner <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but you get a cleaner kind of like end point, if that makes sense. So you've spent hours burning a beautiful candle, your room smells incredible. You're like, oh, it smells like a dream, but I'm gonna to go to bed in like an hour. So I'm gonna blow it out now. So I can enjoy the scent and it will kind of, you know, disperse by the time I'm going to go to bed. However, if you blow out your candle, next thing you know, it gets a bit smoky and then the whole room smells of smoke. And then you're like, oh, I've kind of ruined it. So what I always do is I try to buy a candle which comes with a lid. For instance, this one comes with a jam jar lid. And I always put the lid on top and then the lack of oxygen will basically make your candle so it it dies rather than you've blown it out, if that makes sense. If you blow out the candle but it's still a bit red and it still burns, your wick can burn a little bit and then not only is it smokier but also your wick could get too short. So it keeps your wick nice and thick and nice and long. <laughs> And I hope I'm describing this right. But yeah, always try and put a lid on. And also, if I buy a candle which doesn't come with a lid, sometimes I might put like an old plate on top. Or I might put a different lid from a different candle. Or also a bell jar works really well as well. Next, trim your wick. So often forgotten, really important. You want to have, ideally, you want your wick to be about six millimeters long. This is like the perfect length. This will not only make it so that like your candle doesn't get all kind of smoky and burn too hot, it will kind of keep your burn time to its optimum amount so it won't burn your candle up too quick or get it burning too little if the wick is too short and it won't make it smoky and it's just the perfect length so try and trim your wick every time or at least even if you don't trim it every time at least check it you want it to be about six millimeters long no longer oh yeah sometimes when you light your candle it can we get a bit smoky. Have you ever had that? Don't worry, that happens. Just go with it. After a few minutes, it should stop smoking. It might just be that it's taking a second for like the wax to get up or it's burning old wax off. It's fine, just let it smoke for a minute and maybe have the window open for a second. Then shut the window once it's less smoky and life is good. Oh yes, and if it does all go wrong, sometimes boyfriends have a habit I'm not throwing shade at anyone here. Yeah, so sometimes, so sometimes other people in your house dads, boyfriends, whoever, may have a habit of blowing out your candle, 
before the top layer has got all perfectly melted. I don't know, maybe they've just messed it up in some way. Just let it burn down and then when you get to the end, save that wax that's left over at the side. It's probably mounted up on one side. Buy new wicks, render it down, make yourself a new candle. It actually works really well. I will do a tutorial soon, I promise, but I find that's the best way of salvaging what's left of your candle. If you don't want to render it down but you have an oil burner, you know the ones where you put the wax in, take out any wax that's left over from your previous one, give it a bit of a wash out so there's no residue left in so you don't like have the smells clashing. Just basically like, <laughs> you just get kind of like a kitchen, not like even a kitchen knife, just like an eating knife and you can just like hack away a bit of the wax that's left over in your candle, put it in the top, put a candle in here, let it melt and you can still enjoy the fragrance and it will just mean that you get the full amount of burn time out of your candle even though the candle is burnt down, there's still a little bit of wax left, you can just put it in an oil burner and enjoy it for even longer to come. And um, yeah, I hope that is of help to you. Please don't judge me for spending so much on candles. I just really enjoy them and I really love them. I think everybody should. <laughs> Thank you very much, bye.